I am unashamed. What about you? So we're back again. <clears throat> yeah. No face paint today. Y'all decided to clean well, up. You know, to everybody, get in early. everybody. Well, we got we had time to wash it off on day four of this duck season. We just went and shot full limits of mallards and gadwalls, a few woodies by nine o'clock. <laughs> When's the last time that happened? Years. <laughs> we, we, we have not done that well that early that much. Well, it's funny because yeah. mom, I, I went by mom's first and I didn't know, she, I knew y'all were back, but then she said, do you think they got them? And I said, well, no, that, they're in early. I said, you think they got full limits? And she was like, well, I don't know. They've been doing the best really when you're good. A woman, <laughs> limits. When you're a woman who happens to be y'all's mother, if she's inquiring about <laughs> Did y'all get them? That's right. I mean, how'd you That's do? Good. Well, she said. Her, so she, the next she thing went, she went, "Wow!" <laughs> the next thing she told me, she said, "You know, uh, your daddy is just so happy. I mean, we're they're killing ducks over there, and it just makes all the difference in his his happiness." <laughs> well, what happened was this morning. You know, I was late. I wasn't late here, but I was cutting brush, and I had to get a trailer because my. My rig was loaded down. So they're all on the bank waiting on me so they can go out there and sit right. and watch me and Jay <laughs> get ready. And we went to a place that was hard. We had, there was no, we had to park the boat. There's no boat run. Well, we had to take two boats because I had all the brush. Yep. Of course, Phil was like, well, we already, the blind's already brushed. But I was thinking about the hurricane. So I thought, I don't know. Well, when we got up there. So the there, hurricane stripped the blind. Well, it of the stripped bus. my side. It, 70 mile hour wind. Yeah, that's hard to hold brush. So I had right. all the brush, which if we had no brush, guess what? No full limits. We right. killed zero. <laughs> and there was no wind. <laughs> and so we didn't bring that dog. So we had no whining. And it's a, that we call it the elm hole. It's a real intimate. It's one of my favorite. Oh, oh, it's, it's awesome. It's super We're, tight. If you get them in there, it's a death. How trap. high are we up? Uh, it's Ten a tree. Foot. It's a treehouse for adults. <laughs> it was funny as I used to hate it until y'all redid it because me and Godwin are usually in the middle and used to be in the middle of that blind. You couldn't shoot. It was well, a big old live tree. I kind of like that part. Yeah, I, I'm it. sure y'all did. So I was like, well, I'm just going to come out here and sit and watch somebody kill ducks. But well, it now was, it's fixed. So I, Well, it was funny. So but they, I love the hole. They weren't saying a word to me because they were... Of course, it's getting daylight. I'm looking at my clock. I'm running on my my phone. I'm like, we're gonna be late. Right, not we, gonna make we can't because it it's too far a walk. It's a real open area, so I had to pull the boat, probably half a mile. And the the this year the ground is soft where the water is. Because is we had so most, much water, right? It's the most yeah. difficult walking. So by the time I get to the blind, I don't care who's mad. I'm worn <laughs> out. <laughs> and so then Jay. Was trying to get all the decoys ready, but he was just—it's just a lot for one man. And I'm, you know, shuttling the boat. Now the young bucks, I've been calling them, <laughs> but, are not but I just looked up one day and they're in their fifties now. <laughs> That's right. So yeah. the young bucks are in their fifties. Nobody's you know what I'm nobody's right. young. And <laughs> and that's the problem. I'm fifty-five, but I'm leaning the other way because I got a bad knee. I can't walk in mud. But you then, know, but I mean, look, the, a problem. the first couple ducks came in, flared, and so Cy was standing up in the middle of the blind. But I've made a vow. I'm not going to gripe. I just, he's, he's Cy. Yeah. And so I noticed, I, Phil said, Cy, you going to get out? <laughs> so he just stood there. Well, Cy has a for, theory. He thinks he's invisible. Well, he does. As long as he's still. He he stood there for about a minute after Phil had said it, and I thought he he just is he that stubborn? <laughs> and look, then he sat down, and as soon as he sat down, Duck started it started. Coming. Yeah, they can and then we killed them the whole time. Because when you're up and, off the water like that, I mean, you're a lot more visible to everything flying around. So it's right. a, it's, a, it's it's yeah. it was built that way. It, so we we hid pretty well. It was yeah. fun. It was me, Phil. Jay, Cy, and Phyllis. Yeah. I think Phyllis, you know, she, she, cause she had to kill her limit too. Right. So that probably took the longest. But she did, she did, she's coming along. Yep. But then she I loves noticed it too. everybody, yeah, loves it. you know, what happened was, and it's just like life, whenever, whenever you get up on the mountaintop of duck hunting, which is full limits by nine o'clock, which was awesome, 
All that stuff that happened this morning, that's all a distant memory. <laughs> Everybody was smiling and happy. And so it was it was a perfect uh lead in to my wife. She, she I was supposed to say maybe yeah. it was your shirt you wore. She created I had this shirt and which here's a funny story. She came in last night and she said, Hey, would you show this shirt on the podcast for the we, we have most of y'all know that we have a charity for kids with cleft lip and palate in Mia's. It was Mia's idea, our yep. daughter, because she's she and actually, that. how old how old was she when y'all when she y'all started that? She, she was, was young. about eight. Yeah, it was her idea. She's, it was incredible. Well, she and I told this story. It's kind of moving. She said she heard me speak one night, and Missy, which was we we learned that that doesn't go well together because I'm used <laughs> to doing the talking. Y'all know that. And then when we did an event together. She was like, are you going to let me talk? She said that in front of everybody. Which they all laughed. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's a sure. good joke, but she wasn't joking. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't good. I could see it in her eye. What's funny is me and Lisa speak almost exclusively together, but what we do to make it work is I do a thing, and then she does a thing, and then I do a thing. So it's Yeah, like, well, we, see, we just went out there not without a plan. Yeah, you were just going to go off the cuff. Which me and you did one one time together well, in San Antonio. Yeah, but, we, but we can do that. We, I mean, yeah. you know. She she was getting her feelings hurt because she <laughs> felt like I was stepping on her. Well, dad and mom couldn't speak together. I mean, that would never work. You know, mom yeah. would just be butting in the whole time. But anyway, after the mm-hmm. event, Mia said, well, when am I going to tell my story? And then she wrote her story out. And I was like, we both cried. And I was like, I think it's time. And so we, we started the Mia Moo and... What we do is we'll pay an occasional surgery, but we basically plug in these families to a network because we're trying to give them hope based on Romans 5. You know, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. That's what we're after. Yep. And uh, sometimes we do little gift baskets, or especially when they, they're first diagnosed and right. they come out, and things that you need that you don't realize you need. And so we're one of the few charities that 100% of the donations – go to the families because we pay any kind of expense you don't have on, any kind on, of administrative costs like most charities right do. well we pay it right so out of our pocket right. and uh so she look this is what do you think of her shirt it kind of has a coronavirus theme a smile that's contagious you see everybody's worried so she's thinking i thought babe now that is genius so that was 100 california the the the, the, the spread more than anything else is singing spiritual songs. That's right. Yeah. That that right there is dangerous. <laughs> and they say so, if you if you sing, it has to be no louder than a whisper. I know we keep bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. But look, so if you want to buy but in the schools, <laughs> it's against the law. The Supreme Court ruled that you can't pray to God even a silent prayer. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> If you if you if you put your head down like that, they they and they see you. You say, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm thanking, well, I thanking God for the hamburger." Yeah, it's against it's against the law. <laughs> in the to pray every state silently. Every state is that a start, certain state? sure. Hmm. Well, I need to read up on that. Yeah, so anyway, if you want to order one of these, you go to miamoo.org. If I'm out of line on that, you yeah. let somebody contact me. But I'm, I'm sure we'll hear. I'll, I'll, I'll check into it. I'm sure it. they'll look it up. <laughs> oh, they'll look it up. Google it myself. I wouldn't be surprised if, if certain states had that. I didn't know if it was the national thing. It's interesting, though, Jace, you brought up that text in, in Romans 5, which is really a, a wonderful text. I mean, the whole Romans thing is good. Somebody sent us a thing, because uh, we get questions from people all the time, and it just said, we need a Roman study. <laughs> That's what they said. And it's funny because we've been talking about where we go from here. Me, I like it's them. my favorite book of the Bible. It's, it's awesome. In fact, we, we've been talking about maybe writing a book somewhere down the road. I mean, about I camp out there just about all the time. So well, I, I love I've that. i got to go with John just because I, I want to focus on Jesus. No, but, we, we did the right thing. So we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit He has given us. The reason I was going to mention that because you brought it up is that when you're going through something difficult, you know we're human beings. None of us want to go through that stretch we just mentioned. That's right. But but you have to, and the process is where you learn. Just like just like you guys and and me. I mean, from our standpoint, we of course we're in it with you through the surgeries and all that stuff. 
But when I see the process of what happens over a course of, you know, now she's almost, what, she's 17 years old? 17. And look, I'll tell you a good story. I never thought, even when she had the multiple operations and they show me some pictures, but it's one of these things where when I saw her, and I've seen her throughout all the operations. They done. They do tremendous work these days. Amazing the way they arrange their faces and all. But I never saw the. You know, I'm looking at it. Yeah. But I never saw it. You see right. what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, and that's, well, that's what good. happens yeah. when you're in the fan. In fact, I think the biggest shock. I, mean, I didn't. I saw her, but the I didn't. Biggest shock didn't for see us that. was when she sort of transitioned from the cleft lip, like that surgery that sort of really made her look different. That was a, more of a shock to the family. Oh, it was devastating to me. Yeah, because but. we had been so used to her being the way she was. But you know, it's interesting, Jason. I thought back. I, I still remember because Lisa was with Missy when she saw that first ultrasound when they discovered. Oh yeah. That she that was she you know now they can look inside the womb with these three and four D images most of the time most of the time yeah. so you can know and that's Missy and Jace knew but I just remember from the moment of finding that out and then the what you have to go through in your mind is just what we just saw in Romans 5 and, and of course it, we walk with Jason and Missy through that mm-hmm. moment it took me 3 months to get my attitude straight Missy right. and I both right. we we kind of had our pity party we're like why is this happening? Which yeah. is what people do when sufferings come their sure. way. You start blaming God. And it's understandable. Why. It's it's, it's but nobody likes you, pain. A girl. Whew, she's inspiring. But I was gonna tell you a funny story last night, because we the last time we did our podcast, or maybe the one before, we were talking about this internet and the cell phone and yep. what do you do with the kids? And well last night, Mia said, I'm gonna cook supper for y'all. And I I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Now, you know how picky the Robertsons are. So oh, I was I, already nervous. I don't know whether I'd ever cut a deal like that. <laughs> and we're not cutting a deal. She come in there and made an announcement. I wasn't going to say, no, it's during the holiday. She wants to cook. I said, I'll try anything once. She said, are you excited? I said, nope. <laughs> and she said, why? I said, because I'm trying to have low expectations here. I said, when somebody tells me to go see a movie, it's the best movie ever. It's never going to be good because my expectations are too high. And, and mom is the worst because every movie mom sees is the best movie. It's the best. She's like, it's the best movie you'll ever see. You know, I'll go up there and I'm like, no, nah, nah, give it a four. <laughs> well, I'm to the so, point to where when they, no matter who it is that dreams up a big recipe, you know, I'm pretty well saying, no. I said, Miss Kay, you, you cook. I you cook it. I eat your cooking. I said, the other cooking. That's still bad. Said, so here's good. what happened. Look, so she has a friend. And she brings up a friend. Well, it was one of the eight. And I I told this story. You'll have to go back into the archives. But when we had our phone intervention, you know, I posed as my daughter on this Snapchat for a couple of days. And I got to know her eight best friends on there. And then I basically said, if you want to keep hanging out with my daughter, you will need to bring one of your parents or both and we'll, uh, to my house. And we're going to make better decisions moving forward. Well, six, six or seven of the eight came to my house with their mom. No dad showed up. That's fine. With the mom. Well, one of these girls, now we're two years on right. this side of it. She was one of the girls. I, I hadn't seen her since because now Mia's yeah, pretty much in, in, yeah. in Austin. And uh, so she walked in. I was like, hey, you know. Of course, they what they did as a result, I don't know if it was as a result or misspeak, but she's homeschooled now. Yep. So, which same thing when you when you start trying to get your kids to heaven, sometimes you have to do drastic things. That's right. And I'm all for it. You make spiritual Jesus decisions mm-hmm. to get your kids to heaven. I'm I'm for it. I just think God will bless you in that. Well, so you can't I, keep. You know, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Yeah. So sometimes you have to shock the system. Let's take a quick break. So, Dad, the other day you were in here before we started rolling camera and you were uh, showing us your hair is getting a little grayer and a little thinner for the first time. Which you're 74. It's pretty amazing. You held on to your hair longer than most. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing because your dad was bald pretty early. I mean, Paul was yep. he was bald, you know, by the time he was my age. So one of our sponsors that's been with us a long time, that of course, is Keeps. You hear us talk about it quite a bit. And basically what they're trying to do is maybe start that process way earlier. If you're losing your hair, you're young, you don't want to go the whole 
peeled onion goatee look, uh, which a lot of guys do. <laughs> you see that? So you might want to keep, you know, your hair for just a little while longer. So you, the way you do this is uh, from your own home. You don't have to go anywhere. You go online, keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. You're going to get 50% off your first order for the hair loss treatments. When you get on there, you're going to check out and see if you're able to do this product or not. So it's keeps.com, K-E-E-P-S.com slash door for 50% off and keep your hair. You have to break that cycle. And whether it's getting new friends or you you have to break the cycle of the device. But anyway, so I thought it was really cool because they just seemed to be bubbling over with joy they were cooking they were giggling they would come in there can you smell what do you think it is you know and so i was like i have no idea i heard something about gravy and so i was thinking gravy is not easy so i was not feeling good about this what's yeah, gravy is more than the 401 but so anyway yeah. when all the smoke had cleared literally because there was a little smoke <laughs> i go in there and i'm like what is it? I I I couldn't identify. You couldn't identify. It? Couldn't identify. It. Mm. And she said, "This is gourmet macaroni and cheese." I said, "All right, well, yeah. I like macaroni and cheese. Yeah, that that, that but, would be enough for me to say, <laughs> what am I doing this for?'" So, but by I saw. Way, did by the way, did I ever inquire? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or recommend. Uh, I tell you what, you boys going there and rustle me up some grub. No, I well, never said she that. Had, I didn't. Did, you have, did I ever she, ask you to rustle up a good I, meal? It was we a were, teenager we meal. For you she guys. had biscuits. She made some biscuits, and she had macaroni and cheese. But it was, I mean, it had a little roux to it because I saw an where they'd cut up an onion and. There were different things, and it had breadcrumbs on it, and there was like five different cheeses on it, and it was yeah. a different kind of noodles. And I'm gonna tell you, I took a bite, loved it. It was what great, fantastic. I was like, you need to do this the next time we do macaroni and cheese at our Thanksgiving thing. <laughs> oh, it was it, now I, you know, it was a you're a better man than I. <laughs> it was a carb comfort food <laughs> teenager because yeah. they were. I noticed not their pile. Diet, but... Her and her friend was twice as big as my pile. Because Mia loves some mac and cheese, doesn't she? She loves macaroni and cheese. I, I mean, was thinking about her when we go eat at Capitol Grill. Yeah. One that Mine's a little deep in that because to to learn how to really cook well, it has to be critiqued. So you can learn from your errors. I saw no better. problem with this. And so so, But a lot of people out there, that they, they, they don't want their cooking critiqued. Right. If you say something, how was it? I'm like... If you'd have hit that salt shaker one more time, it'd have been too much. <laughs> Which well, is really saying is, it's too salty. <laughs> no, my point is, look, <laughs> really here's my salty. point. My daughter could have said, I'm going to go be with some friends, or I'm going to, I mean, she's 17, but she said, I want to cook for y'all. She invited one of her, her friends who mm-hmm. I love and adore. But it was a she, good gesture she for cooked you, for even us. if it look, was bad. Then they played the piano for two hours, and which yeah. was because she's awesome. Yeah. And, I mean, it was a wonderful evening. Yeah. And you're right. <clears throat> you got out a little bit out. You got out of your comfort zone, yeah, to I be guess. able to have a good evening for her. I was, it was a good gesture, and my Jeff. expectations were so low. If it was edible, <laughs> I would have been happy. It was actually phenomenal. <laughs> but so, but it's interesting, Dad, because we've talked about this several times on the podcast. Now that Phyllis has, you know, entered our our world and our life, is that you raising boys? It's a different mindset with boys. Like I had girls too, and granddaughters first. I would girls have no idea how to raise girls. I know. It's a different I'm mindset. I'm glad I was spared that. I mean, I'm glad. <laughs> well, it. here's my now vote. You're doing you it need to let them boys. cook for you for occasionally, in my opinion. I mean, the rearing phase is over when you run up on, like like in, in her situation. Yeah, so she's 40, 45 years old. 45. But she's, but in, she's, she's still, a trooper as far as going to the duck bar. And let's face it, that, she still she's, wants to be around you. She moved down here and lived next door because she wants to be around you. So... There's something about a daughter to her dad. She wants yep. to matter. Yeah, to there's him. something to that. And boys are, not that you don't want to matter, but we're just different. Jason Willie cooked when they were teenagers, but, you, I mean, it was toast, pizzas. No, I cooked everything I could. I mean, but it was all out. just to, to yeah. fill the, their bodies were just, you know, you know, teenage boys are just like great white sharks. Jace was doing the commentary when we were teaching her how to shoot. She read, you know, she, got, she went to the course. You know, and from, oh, yeah, from she, the state. 
So she had a, a feel for her weapon, how to load it. But now we're down to actually shooting ducks. So yeah. the one, somebody crippled one, and the duck's swimming away. And it's just, all right, get after it. So, all right, Phyllis, you, your duck, shoot, shoot him. Boom, about two foot over. <laughs> and Jay said, pull your gun down. You, you're not looking down your barrel. You, you, right. You're shooting too high. So so now we're at that stage. Yep. And, you know. But she got it. It took yeah, it's, half she's a box com- of shell. She's <laughs> coming along. Yeah. Well, she was the, the opening day. She was. We've never hunted with a woman like that. She, so. What happens is with duck hunting, and we just, I guess you just did it naturally, but it's, no. it's one fluid motion. Yeah, but you, but you, it's a learned thing. You just can't remember. Right, because we were I, so young. I, yeah, I mean, it, and it is, you're right. I mean, when I was, you know, four or five years old, I was. You could at least get a gun up on your shoulder and shoot, right? Oh, right. I shoot a BB gun like a, you know, an assassin. They say there's more and more women duck hunters. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's growing. Well, women in hunting in general. Yeah. It is a big deal. And a lot of the most the more popular uh shows on the outdoor channel are like couples. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. I think the more people that hunt, the better cuz if not we lose all these generations of hunters and then you then you don't have people to conserve for wildlife. Well, with anything, the it's more been a you... little it's been a little change of format because when it's just men, you know, you you, you just cut a V-shaped hole and some of this felt. <laughs> You know, it's, you just pee through the hole. Yeah. But, you know, when you got your daughter sitting there, you know, you're like, okay. So that was the uh, biggest uh, conversation before Saturday, last Saturday was, what are we going to do about peeing? And I was just like, well, I just just walk around. Imagine walk her. Yeah. She's got a hold. I told her yesterday we had a big, we were floating on logs. And I said, that log, plenty enough to hold you. I said, there's a mini coon taking a leak here. You can do it too. <laughs> I said, get out there on that log behind the blind. You know, she's out of sight, out of yeah, mind. Right. I said, you know, when you gotta go, you gotta go. I said, but we'll just. It's stand. an option. The night before, yeah. the night before opening day, that was her biggest question. What do I do if I have to pee? I said, mm-hmm. go pee. I mean, like yeah. the end of the day, you gotta go, you gotta go. Hey, you know? Now she's true. got some kind of apparatus. She but bought. you know, in our society, ladies and gentlemen, I must admit to all of you, I'm <laughs> 74 years old. But if someone had asked me, would we ever have a female in the duck blind duck hunting with us? I'd have said, I, I doubt that'll ever happen. But. Till it's happening. Till she showed up. It's My happening. own daughter, I just got get in the four-wheeler. I think she's got as much drive oh, as, like, it skipped over. I mean, you like going, but you're not passionate. Oh, I, I'm not passionate about Willie, it. Willie, no. Jeff, meh. But she's in. I gave she her a little crash course on how to drive a four-wheeler in Argo, mm-hmm. you know, and I said, okay, get in there. Get over and fire that thing up. She's looking around there at me, you know, she's a gear shift on your right, jamming up in there, forward. And so here we go, you know. Yeah. I was watching her. Well, she went with Stone. She likes to deer hunt, too. And so she and Stone and BK went yesterday. And yeah, they they come hauling in three deer. I know. It. It was well, I had ordered one, so. <laughs> I tell you what, you tell Stone you need some deer meat, and they ain't long before you got deer meat. We have high-protein, uh, uh, what, what do they call it, organic. We got organic meat. Coming out of the woods, high protein, deer, ducks, everybody's happy, you oh, know. Yeah. We have baked ducks coming up and Thanksgiving, duck and dressing, you know, and duck wraps, Stone was getting some <laughs> ready, you know. The tenderloins, you know, the cream cheese in them, oh, yeah. you know, wrapped in bacon, you know. We're getting we're getting way on out there. Well, and you know, we we're talking about we were talking about cooking. It is great food. The really men, is. the Robertson men, and now the the Marians like Stone. Um, some pretty good cooks. Yeah, you know Willie is a great cook. I You're actually a good can cook. eat Stone. Jace cook, is a cooking. Good cook. Yeah, I need his cooking. Stone, I mean, he, and he researches it. You know, when he's trying he to does. figure out what he's going to do, he goes and looks and sees what other people do. Cooking That's how he is learned a, how to cooking is a mm-hmm. is a skill set. Big, it is big time. Well, you know, Lisa started out; she couldn't cook anything, but we were next door to mom, so she observed, she watched, and she knew this kind of food I like. Now she couldn't pull it off. Till about after five years, but then she started making those same dishes that I grew up eating. Now she's a fine. By the way, Jace, I saw the sweet potatoes out. They had washed Uh-oh. them all up. They just fixed to uh, bake them and cook That's them in the tradition. oven. Tradition. That is the original tradition, like no other. I, on Thanksgiving, pie. I eat a whole <laughs> pie. You know, just, that day, I just right? grab it. No, I just grab it and eat it. <laughs> so I'm wondering if I'll come up to a point. There's in my an art life. to cooking a sweet potato pie. Trust me, I've well, tried. There's a an few art to eating like, a whole no. one in one sitting. It's not 
it's not easy. Miss Kay, your mama, her grandma that taught her that. Well, and your mom. Especially so, the crust. And your mom. So, Granny, let, let's take another break. So, uh, one of our sponsors, uh, a company called uh, Scoremaster, uh, what they've done is they've kind of come up with a way to be able, an algorithm, to be able to bump up your credit score, uh, which is helpful for young families that are trying to refinance a home or buy a car. A lot of questions now going on about because of anytime you have a leadership change in the country, what's going to happen? Interest rates, you know, a lot of that was stock market. Yeah. So there are a lot of people, you know, a little bit worried about it, and that's understandable. These guys basically can boost your numbers up to help you if you've got to do a loan. And so basically if you – do their average, which is 61 points in 20 days, that saves you nine grand on a car loan or a house, a hundred grand, you know, over the course of a, of a loan. So it's a good way to save some money over the long term. Uh, see how many plus points you can add to your credit score at scoremaster.com. That's scoremaster.com slash Phil. So granny, I can remember when we were young, she was next door, and so she would do the sweet potato pies mm-hmm. and the pecan pies, and she'd usually do a fruit cake. But I just remember you'd always go in there, and she'd spend two days cooking, and just all over every surface There's in her kitchen there was a pie. Mm-hmm. I mean, she would cook about, remember, 15, oh, yeah. 12, 15 pies. Oh, and yeah. now mom does the exact same thing. I mean, yeah. she, she learned it. She learned from her grandmother, and then she learned from granny. And she does the same thing. Mm-hmm. I always tell mom, I was like, she'll do something like that, and I say, you have to be an old lady. To pull that off. That's right. You know, the young ones can't pull it off. No. <clears throat> Alex tries to do it now, but she just ain't got the seasons yet. She's you know, she's yep. wanting to learn. She'll get it. Yep. But I said, you got to get older. You got to be. So a- where were we when we were so rudely interrupted last time? <laughs> yeah. Who really, you know, I, we ran into Willie outside. He said, I started to just bust in y'all's podcast. I said, look, Tonight? anytime you're down here, you bust in. We'll, we'll, you can sit in the chair. Sure. We'll talk about the Bible. So we were talking about uh, <clears throat> from John 18. At 19, and there were a few things we didn't quite tie up <clears throat> when we got to uh, when we got to Pilate that I wanted to talk about today because we talked about in my sermon, you know, we talked about these religious forces that are lined up against Jesus, but really they all got in together with the political forces. And you think about it, so their whole deal was we're going to kill him. That was the plot. The, the religious leaders, he was a threat to their power, and. They misunderstood the purpose of the Messiah is why I think they missed the whole thing because mm-hmm. they thought he's going to come in, overthrow the Romans. Israel will now be the eternal kingdom in, in that spot over there. And they're still Standard old uh, he, uh, human construct, human construct. E- empires. And so these religious leaders, they thought, well, we're just going to keep being the power people we are. And so they, they thought in their minds, that's why they wanted to kill him. Pilate doesn't want to kill him. Because his job is just to keep peace. I mean, he's an overlord. You just don't want any riots. You don't want any of this stuff. So it's really interesting. So Pilate is trying to come up with every possible reason not to execute Jesus. His Mm -hmm. problem was he was going up against the force of God because Jesus came here to die. In other words, there was no stopping it. Well, and he just didn't act like a normal. I mean, when you think about it, he came up there, they said, when they was going to arrest him. They said, we're looking for Jesus. I'm he. Right. Well, most people <coughs> do the opposite. They're like, well, it wasn't me. Right. Oh, I, <laughs> I heard. It was a, well, then his buddies pull out a sword. So that's what we do. We're going to fight. We'll go yeah. to. He's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. So This is why, like you said last time, I came here to do this. And he's been telling the whole time. Well, right. And then it's like, but even in the conversations, the the how many people can say, haven't you listened to everything I've ever said in public? Do you have anything that you can come up with? I mean, I'm paraphrasing there, but he's like, is <laughs> there anything I said that you find troubling? Crickets. <laughs> no. Nothing. And then, so then they attack him, and he's like, did you have this idea yourself, or did somebody else come right. up with it? Because he knows somebody else came up with the idea. Right. You What's know. amazing is we're in 18, well, John 8, when Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, then you're really my disciples, and then you'll know the truth, Right. and the truth will set you free. And they're like, free? We're not slaves anymore. He said, yeah, you are. Right. You, 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 you. And he ended up by saying the one they were following was the father of lies, the devil, 
Jesus used the term devil, and he was a murderer from the beginning, not whole until the truth. Right. So there, you talk about these people were, they, they, he said, you're trying to kill me. Right. And the reason you're trying to kill me is you belong to your father, the devil. That's right. He said there's a relationship that's formed between people when Satan controls them. And we they talked form, about that last time. That was they the, bow down to him. That was the other force that was at work here was the evil forces because Satan was behind the whole thing. So here's what's interesting. So in the in the in what you were talking about, Jace, which is 1833 through 38, which mm-hmm. is the back and forth with Pilate and Jesus. So, well, and even I was making mention of before that in that first trial when they struck right. him. and Right, he's with, like, the, with the high priest. If yeah. I... If I said anything wrong, tell me what it is. Right, crickets. Yeah, no, he didn't way, say anything I, wrong. By yeah. the way, when when we t- when we say, why, how in the world can you abort your children? And when you wrote on the notes here uh, that sprung forth from John eighteen, First Timothy six twelve and thirteen, fight the good fight of the faith. This is the Apostle Paul talk, talking. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made good fa- your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Jesus is Lord. You know. Right. In the sight of God, now just think about it. The person with all these, all this banter back and forth with the religious authorities and the government authorities, and both of them are coming at him wide open. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the sight of God, and he makes this little statement. A lot of people don't realize don't don't the, the weight of it doesn't hit them. Who gives life to everything? Yep. I mean, he's he's saying anything you see alive, right? Whether it be whether it be trees that they, 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 they grow, they start up and they produce fruit, and right. then they get old, and another one will take its place. Whether it's the cosmos, whether it's all these microbes, whether it's all the animal world, the human race, you're like he gives life to everything. Correct. It's a pretty good statement <clears throat> when when the final day is coming and they're out to, uh, and and then he goes on in who while testifying uh, uh, he gives life to everything and of Christ Jesus who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. When he when Pilate said, you know, you know, you're a king, he said, you, you've said it. Right. He said, that's the reason I came into the world. He's like, you're right. So Paul mentions that. Can you be- imagine a human being telling telling a, a, a sitting king, right? That yeah, well, you're right there. And Paul mentioned it because Jesus said, he said, are you a king? And he said, well, you say I'm a king, but I came here to testify. To the truth, yeah, you know, which is that, and that's the what reason Paul I was it. born and came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth here, Pilate, listens to me. Right, Pilate's <laughs> answer was, "What is truth?" So I well, thought that's where it. we are, twenty twenty, exactly, two thousand twenty years later. Well, right. we don't know what the truth is because anymore. think about a politician. The there's two things that they're super afraid of. One is truth. You don't want an absolute truth. Oh, we got to right. be able to work out a deal, right? Mm-hmm. And the that's second right. thing is, you don't want a side. He said, everyone on the side of truth. Politicians are always trying to play it down the middle. We want to try to make everybody happy and be popular. <clears throat> but you what remember what he said? It's like when Thomas said, show us the way. How do we get to heaven? Which is what people even today say. How, how do you get there? And he's like, I am the way. But then he said, I am the truth. So when he said, what is truth? He's our, Jesus, the, the question would have been better if, when, if he had said, who? Right. I but we don't, we don't think that way. Right. Neither was Pilate, because you were never thinking that a person is truth. Yeah. And Anything a- coming out of his mouth is undeniable truth. Which to me, that's why I keep going to the details with all Plus, the things he said. It was all. How, how do you make all that up? That's why when The Passion, that movie, Mel Gibson came out, well, what do you know? The most watched movie or top three. But it's because this story is so, of, of who Jesus is and what he said is so profound and so startling. It, it defies logic to say, well, somebody just, invented this because it's almost the opposite of what we would think everything we would do in this type of situation well he seemed to do the opposite right which let's take a break 
<clears throat> which is why I think that the religious leaders were after him so bad. Think about it. He shows up. He just goes straight to the people, starts teaching, doing parables. He's got this little ragtag group around him. He doesn't go to them. You'd think if anybody was going to be the Messiah, that first place you'd go. That first place you go is to go to the people in mm-hmm. charge. Jesus or or you'd, you'd use some kind of weapons, like like when brought the sword. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't that's not the. That's not my yeah. thing here. Well, plus well, think about it. So he tells Pilate, he says, "My kingdom is not of this world." He says it twice, and Pilate says, "Well, you are a king." Then, so he's got his narrative going. But what do you think Pilate was says? So, so where is this kingdom? Is it? Well, uh, is it on he another planet? Is it? Thought- <laughs> Okay, this guy's different. Well, he's looking at Jesus, <laughs> and he's thinking about how he even got there. But you know what? No, I think he was thinking he's good. This guy's a good guy. He he, he's not, he didn't want to be he didn't violent. Want to ex- he, the, right. he He's just doing good. He's helping people. But then when he heard that statement, he thought, oh, he's crazy. So remember this. So, so here's something I wanted to bring out today. It's not in the John text, but if you go look at the Luke account, so Pilate gets to a point right after this. He comes out. He says, look, you know what? Let me... Here's Barabbas. You know, it's, he thought he had a political solution. You know, it's customary for me to release somebody, so let's release Jesus. You know, because obviously he's the king of your the king of you. Unless this other guy, who by the way, a lot of manuscripts say Barabbas's name was Jesus Barabbas. So I was saying, here's another Jesus. If you just yeah. got to have a Jesus, yeah. let's get this guy because yep. everybody knows he's a criminal. Of course, then they're like crucify him, crucify him. So what Pilate does, he he hears that Jesus was from Galilee. So again, like a politician, he says, oh, wait a minute. I'll send him to Herod, mm-hmm. who was the Tetrarch, you know, which is basically four children, four sons of Herod the Great. They're running four regions of Israel. And so he said, well, I'll just send him up there because we know Herod has the authority to kill because he killed John the Baptist. He cut his head off because he was you know, talking about their family situation. Mm-hmm. So he sends him up to Herod thinking, that's how I'll get rid of him. The problem was, and I was going to mention this, Dad, so Herod the Great, this is what's ironic, because you said, for this reason I was born. Herod the Great, you remember, was the one when Jesus was born, the Magi came, and they, they had this prophecy, and this, they'd seen all the stars. They were like, there's, you know, the Messiah is coming. So he got all nervous about it because he thought, well, so he's going to knock me off my throne. So when after Jesus was born, you know, God spoke to Joseph and Mary and took Jesus into Egypt to protect him. Herod the Great kills all the infant males in Galilee. I mean, you talk about it. We talk about abortion and stuff now. I mean, it goes back to that innocent. Exactly. The, 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 the attack on the innocent. And what's sad is he killed them for nothing because Jesus wasn't even there. You know? And on top of all that, I have a book here. It's a Bible. You say, well, you idiots are in here talking about you know, sins being removed and being bought back, redeemed by God, and you'll be eternal beings that'll live forever. We like, yeah, that's that's the, that's the thrust of it. We also have Al. Not everything he said, because the books wouldn't hold it, according to one of the apostles. So when you look at this, you say, here it is. Well, someone gave me a, a sheet of paper the other day. And it had the world's best-selling books, and the Bible was so far ahead of <laughs> everything else. But look, three point nine billion over the last fifty years. Hmm. The last fifty years, from nineteen seventy to two thousand twenty, three point nine, right at four billion wow. books. <laughs> this Bible were sold. So any way you want to slice it, why is it the number one seller? Every year, and it's been that way for a long time since they started despite, printing books. Despite all the carnage we see in America and yeah. all over the world, you're like, man, that book there is way ahead of all of them. The question would be, why? Right. Why does it sell to, to so many people? Because people are looking for truth. <laughs> Just what we talked about in this thing. I think it's you answered when my you question. get into the details of who Jesus is and what he says. There's even like this quote here when he was. You know, I don't know if y'all have ever been arrested, but he said, if I said something wrong, they struck him in verse 23 of 18. He said, if I said something wrong, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Well, he's the only person that's ever been on the planet past the age of accountability who could say that. 
Yep. Because he think didn't do anything man, wrong. Think about a man sitting and, and he's sitting in the witness chair or whatever, and the judge is right beside him, and the attorneys are going at him. Think about a guy who would say, let me explain something to you. I've never done anything wrong. The, my entire life. Yeah, not one time. Not one misstep. There's Can any a, of you find where... And he, he kept asking that question. <laughs> if any of you has something yeah. against me, let me, let's me let hear it. That's a I rare would love position. He's the only person that can say, let me explain this to you. <laughs> I'm not talking about having a skeleton in the closet. I don't have one bone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a closet. <laughs> I don't even have a closet. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm somebody a carpenter. like that, right. you're thinking, and they're looking at him, and they're like, let's see now. And But they go to reeling back what they've heard, and they're like, this, well, guy, and John a, a, this guy is, is sitting there flat-footed saying, can you find... But back in John 8 again. He said it there. He said, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Yeah. I remember the first time I Where'd read I that. Where did I go wrong? Where did I, I thought, make one mistake? I could never say something like that, which is what I mean. No one can. How do you, have a, how do you invent a character? Which I've used people who are mad at God or had a bad religious experience. I've used this verse before and said, show me something that Jesus is wrong about. And I've read this. Mm-hmm. I have never had even a, an attempt of somebody said, well, I'll tell you what he's wrong about. Nope. Now, they may go somewhere else in the Bible. Or talk about their own personal pain. Yeah. Or, whatever. Or, yeah. or their own church. Or, you know, right. sister so-and-so did something to whatever. But no accusation against Jesus, which is incredible. How If you just invented this story, how could you come up with every line that is infallible? That's what I'm saying. Because Al, all this, it is written. Yep. It is not only is it is it everything he said, I mean right. in the it is written. It's written down. And <clears throat> let's take one last break. And not only that, Dad, it had to be. You know, so many times we've been reading the book of John. He had would, to be written. He down. would say something, and then then John would say, "No, this had he had to say this because it was said back here, Isaiah, Deuteronomy. I mean, all those fulfillments. Every said, single boy, one whoever of them. wrote I, that book, that was the number one setter from now on. Boy, we need to get on the, this thing about the, and write books the way they wrote book, but never yeah. realized. And you say, <laughs> yeah, there's about forty people put that together. You think a look, publisher would be happy if over you get, about five thousand? Would a publisher years. be happy if you came up with a book you could sell for a billion? Of? <laughs> yeah. I think I teased this about four podcasts ago, and it just now occurred to me that I never <laughs> cashed in on it. But the closest well, you're good going back four. I can't remember. Yesterday. Well, the closest I ever came to being arrested, which the reason I was going to make this point and I, I teased the story, is because. This is one time where I did nothing wrong. The closest I ever came to being arrested, I did nothing wrong. You were innocent. I, I was completely innocent. And the only reason I think I got away out, out of it is because my attitude came across that I didn't do this. And I'll, I'll tell you the story. I mean, you're like the guy who gets hit by the pitch. And you, he couldn't fake it because it hurt, you know. So a lot of times yeah. an umpire, I mean, you know, what I'm saying you're you're yeah. what you what somebody saw. Well, that's right. So th- now I'm going. It's way back. I was dating Missy, so that's how far we're going back, thirty years. But I'm leaving her house. It's late. You know, we used to sit in in her uh, driveway. Trust me, we didn't do anything. We waited till we got married, and her dad would constantly he'd stick that head, you know, out the window. <laughs> and you was, could, were close enough to he could get a visual on you. Oh yeah, he's looking. Jace, he was and, not the most trusting father. <laughs> I, I can't blame him. <laughs> so I'm leaving, and I'm headed home, which is about a forty minute drive. And so I take a right at a flashing light. Cop pulls in behind me. I'm not going over the speed limit. Now, I made it worse because they flashed their lights and I kept going because I thought I hadn't done anything wrong. I'm not going over. Come on around me. So I you know, I rolled down my window and was like, go ahead. <laughs> They're like, pull over. <laughs> so I tried that. So I pull over. You know, let me let me check your license. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't have it. Uh-oh. I couldn't find my wallet. Big shocker. Nothing's changed on that part of my life. 
So I so technically question, now you have done something wrong because you're not you're supposed well, to have your license. I know, but now that's because you get, started that's, this that's by that's saying you worse. were innocent. I was innocent of the original <laughs> crime because that's where we're getting to it. This is a good story. <laughs> So when it was this woman state trooper, she said, get out of the vehicle. When I didn't have the license, she'd get out of the vehicle. And she said, your inspection sticker is expired. Well, Jace, I said, you, you're guilty, guilty. <laughs> and, and you're you piling them up. He said he's innocent. Just, you just were hang, a wrecking crew. Just hang in there. <laughs> and was there a dead body in the you back? You got to remember, I was, I was in under your supervision. This wasn't my truck, which I said that. I said, this is not my truck. <laughs> My parents own this truck. Oh, That's boy. on them. I got a good story for she that. She said, well, let me, where's your insurance? I was like, you know, it's not my truck. I don't know. So I don't have any insurance. Inspection stickers expired. I don't have a license. But I, I said, now I'm getting the cuffs on well, after violation number three. Yeah. So I'm like, why did you pull me over? That was the good question by old Jason. She said, well, you didn't come to a complete stop at that flashing red light. So I start thinking back. I never came a, across a flashing red light. So I thought. You turn right at a flashing yellow light? Yep. I uh, said, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. She said, no, that's what you did. I said, well, if we go back there in your car, you're going to see that that. And I told her the road. I yeah. said, you're going to see that light is flashing yellow. So whatever happens after that. I, you know, okay, I don't have an inspect. Uh, my inspection stick. You got me on that. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> and but then I did a key move, took the cuffs off now because now this whole thing's built on a lie. So once you uh, got past the blinking light, she unlocked the cuffs. Unlocked the cuffs then, and because she said, and then she said, "Have you been drinking?" Because it's after midnight. Right. I'm young guy, teenage boy. I look a little rough around the edges. And I, I said, I don't, I don't drink. I love Jesus. Yeah, that's so what you've I been said. using that line for a long so time. So then when she said, well, where's your driver's license? I said, the only idea I have is on this Bible. That's, me, that's my name right here. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying here, <laughs> even though I got some problems. And so eventually the more the conversation went on. You're winning her over. I won her over. Won her over with because she knew she thought I had been drinking. She profiled me. Yep. Most people she pulled she me was over. Arresting, that's that. They, they. And then now I had all these other crimes that we got to deal with. Yeah. Of course, because then at the end she's like, "Look, okay, I thought maybe you know you were drinking, and and you're obviously not. But that doesn't change the fact that you're, this yeah. inspection sticker. Now that's on you." You know, now I realize you said it's your parents' vehicle, but you're driving it. And I was like, Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and I know I have insurance, I just don't have proof. I, I don't. <laughs> so, and she let me off. She but, didn't give you a ticket. Didn't even give me a she ticket. She could have given you tickets oh, that, that mom and dad would have to pay. Have you probably ticket. had $500 but worth of. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Look, when you, you know, at first I was kind of being, I didn't do anything wrong. Of course, you know, and then she starts finding things I did. <laughs> And so my attitude was like, I wasn't worried about it because I was like, I didn't do anything. I, I'm, I'm, and I was feeding off that. But when she got the cuffs out, I don't know, there was a fear that, you know, I'm like, I'm fixed to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was thinking all this is piling up. And that's why when I read this, just having that one moment, even though it was five seconds, of Jesus, here's the creator of the universe, being arrested and he's 100% innocent and just knowing he went along with it just out of love. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's something that would just, it's hard for me to, to think that people just made this up. Yep. I mean, how would you even come up with this idea? And it never went to his head, as they say. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Not at all. You, know, you know, most people, if you ever ran up on one of them that's lived a good moral life, I mean, but they fall short of saying, I've never. Yeah. Broken the law. Right. Meaning the written word. Well, now, what about y'all? Were y'all arrested? Huh? Have you ever been arrested? Yeah, a time or two. Uh, but it was and, foggy. And, and in my case, the reason you can't You said remember? you weren't drunk because you didn't drink. Well, I was drunk because <laughs> yeah. I did drink. <laughs> yeah. And they, you know, get on the pavement, you know, and they get, get, get you down on the road, spread eagle, whatever. 
<laughs> that's that. what I was going to ask y'all. That ends up you but, costing but, you about three hundred and seventy-five dollars at the time, which I didn't have. Probably had but, a zero to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the oh, reason I, I was asking that is if you had to go through all that. And you were a hundred percent innocent. Even me, I wasn't right. innocent because there were. Yeah, you had it, ain't, it ain't hard to find some. Well, let me just give you an example here. That's over the last few days, and two or three people have come. About t- ten people have gotten in touch with me and asked me. They don't know about it. They put me, and they've interviewed me, and I'm a CEO <laughs> of some kind of uh, oil. CBD oil. Some, and somebody says you're in it there too. So oh, Owens calls me last night. He says <laughs> what kind of oil? It's all over the internet. What's it called? It's CBD. It's it's the, some that? kind of extract E-B-D? from marijuana. CBD. CBD. Oh. It has he something said, to do with marijuana. The only thing he about said, marijuana. He said, I just want to know one thing, for Robinson. I said, what's that? He said that CBD. Oh, you're saying you, you you know what that is? I said I have no idea. What are you talking about? <laughs> I laughed. And he said it's, so stupid. it's some kind of marijuana oil, but to take out some. So but somebody's I, I trying thought, to sell it? No, the article said <clears throat> that Dad has started producing I was, it. I was right uh, at death, and he was he was flooding the I was market. Dying, <clears throat> and then I took this well, stuff. Fail. He was flooding but, the market with. But a I cheap don't have any recourse with somebody that I, says that. I mean. I kid you I not. Mean, I don't know. I went. I it's was, a lie, where by was the way, I if you somewhere. Oh, I was in an academy the other day. Uh, this is before duck season, and I have to make this quick. And it was a, it was a funny story. I meet this guy because I bought a, bo- a mojo box, uh, one of the shakers, because they gave us three because we, we're sponsored by mojo. But they said they were out of them. You're talking well, about floating decoys here. That are shaking. Yeah. And, and Put, not, rippled on the water. Yeah. And so I bought one. And he's like, why are you? Isn't that your picture? The guy standing next to him. He's like, aren't you on that box? I said, well, yeah, but it's a long story. <laughs> you know, we were looking at the picture. And he said, man, I'm so sorry, you know, about Cy. And I kind of looked at him. And I was like, what are you sorry about? We all and, are. <laughs> no, and he said, well, that he, that he passed away. Yeah. I said, well, I got some good news for you. He said, what's that? Because he was shocked I said that. When yeah. somebody says, I'm yeah. sorry he passed away. Yeah. I said, he's still alive. <laughs> he said, he came back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he we resurrected I said, with CBD oil. He never died. <laughs> and he said, I read on the internet. And look, I said, let me just, just stop, right stop there. you right there. Stop right there. He said, that didn't happen? I said, it never happened. He said, what? Oh, so I and Dad had both sounded, died. They had me near near death. I'm 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 the CEO of a company who makes marijuana oil. And size so dead. And size so dead. And 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 the, they say that I you know right at the point of death they turn my family around. They I've been interviewed by people. It was the biggest bunch of lies. Everything in it is not true. And then the Jace whole was thing in it. is just this a, thing, well, he, he and his son Jace went on look, live television. They're selling to, you know. this stuff off of I made it. I may I'm, I lived, and this is what saved me. And uh, you can get it at cut rate price. So the so question is, get off on is this? it somebody just sitting behind a computer, some nineteen year old on a college yeah, doing that's it, what it is. or is it you know because they had? But last night it was Completely Breitbart. Breitbart. Why are we, is, uh, why are we talking about this? One of them said the they Daily Post. The, the, How did we get off I mean, on this? Washington what was Post. the point of this? I'm just saying when when Jesus this was was a perfect accused. man. Oh, and and, yeah. and 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 you say, well, at least we're not, oh, oh, we're never charged and accusations because we're, we're here. We are fallible men, but well, I will say this: when when Paul wrote to was it the Colossians? But when there's he said a lot he, of lies being he, told about God's people too. I'm he just freed you us in chapter one. He said he freed us from accusation, which Satan's name means accuser. That's right. Because we can say, which I know the world gets mad when we say that. They're like, oh, I guess you're forgiven. Yeah, I am forgiven. <laughs> yep. By the blood of Jesus. I'm right. sorry you don't like it. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're out of time. We're actually over time. That yeah. was quick. <laughs> it was. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.